History of Kiribati, published December the 9th, 2017. Special characters are denoted as follows. And, beginning and ending single or double quotations. And, left and right parentheses. The islands which now form the Republic of Kiribati have been inhabited for at least 700 years, and possibly much longer. The initial Micronesian population, which remains the overwhelming majority today, was visited by Polynesian and Melanesian invaders before the first European sailors visited the islands in the 17th century. For much of the subsequent period, the main island chain, the Gilbert Islands, was ruled as part of the British Empire. The country gained its independence in 1979 and has since been known as Kiribati. Part 1, Prehistory. The islands had been inhabited by Micronesians for several millennia. At least 2,000 years, probably 3,000. The Ikirabati or Gilberts people settled what would become known as the Gilbert Islands. Named for British Captain Thomas Gilbert by von Krusenstern in 1820. Sometime in between 3000 BC and 1300 AD, subsequent invasions by Samoans and Tongans introduced Polynesian elements to the previously installed Micronesian culture and invasions by Fijians introduced Melanesian elements, but extensive intermarriage produced a population reasonably homogeneous in appearance, language and traditions. Part 2 contact with other cultures. In 1606 Pedro Fernandez de Queros cited Butaratari and Makin, which he named the Buen Voyage. Good trip. In Spanish, islands. Captain John Byron passed through the islands in 1764 during his circumnavigation of the globe as captain of HMS Dolphin. In 1788 Captain Thomas Gilbert in the Charlotte and Captain John Marshall in the Scarborough. Messrs. Gilbert and Marshall crossed through Abemama, Kuria, Aranuka, Tarawa, Abayang, Butaratari, and Mackind without attempting to land on shore. Part 3 Further Exploration In 1820, the islands were named the Gilbert Islands or Isles Gilbert. In French, by Adam Johann von Krusenstern, an Estonian admiral of the Tsar after the British captain Thomas Gilbert, who crossed the archipelago in 1788. In 1824 French captain Louis du Perry was the first to map the whole Gilbert Islands archipelago. He commanded La Coquille on its circumnavigation of the earth. 1822-1825 Two ships of the United States Exploring Expedition, the United States ship Peacock, 1828, and the United States ship Flying Fish, 1838, under the command of Captain Hudson, visited many of the Gilbert Islands. Then called the King's Mill Islands or King's Mill Group in English. While in the Gilberts, they devoted considerable time to mapping and charting reefs and anchorages. Alfred Thomas Agate made drawings of men of the Mackin Islands. Part 4, Colonial Era. Whalers, blackbirders, and merchant vessels arrived in great numbers in the 19th century, and the resulting upheaval fomented local tribal conflicts and introduced damaging European diseases. In an effort to restore a measure of order, the Gilbert Islands and the neighboring Ellis Islands, now Tuvalu, were declared as the British Protectorate by Captain Davis of the Her Majesty's Ship Royalist, 1883, on the 27th of May 1892. Part 4, Colonial Era. Chapter 1. British Western Pacific Territories. The British Western Pacific Territories, BWPT, were administered by a High Commissioner resident in Fiji, 
a resident commissioner, Charles Swain, was appointed in 1893 following the protectorate on the Gilbert Group and on the Ellis Group becoming formal and effective in 1892. The protectorate's headquarters was established on Tarawa at Al in 1896, where resident commissioner Telfer Campbell presided from 1896 until 1908. The headquarters were then moved to Barnaba, which was referred to officially by the British authorities as Ocean Island and continued upon the transition to a crown colony. This move-in headquarters arose from the operations of the Pacific Phosphate Company resulting in good shipping connections to Ocean Island, and in any case the role of the British colonial authorities emphasized the procurement of labor for the mining and shipping of phosphates and keeping order among the workers. Barnaba or Ocean Island was included in the protectorate in 1900 and then in the colony in 1916. In the same year, Fanning Island and Washington Island were included in it together with the islands of the Tokelau or Union Islands. In 1916, the administration of the BWTP ended and the islands became a crown colony on 12 January 1916. Part 4, Colonial Era Chapter 2, Gilbert and Ellis Islands Colony The islands became a crown colony on 12 January 1916 by the Gilbert and Ellis Islands Order in Council, 1915. Christmas Island was included in the colony in 1919 although it was contested by the US under the Guano Islands Act of 1856. Tokelau was transferred to New Zealand administration in 1926. The Phoenix Islands were added in 1937 and the Five Islands of the Central and Southern Line Islands were added in 1972. The Gilbert and Ellis Islands colony continued to be administered by a resident commissioner. One very famous colonial officer in the colony was Sir Arthur Gremble. 1888-1956 at first as a cadet officer in 1914, under Edward Carleon Elliott who was resident commissioner of the BWPT then the colony from 1913 to 1920. This period is described in Elliott's book, Broken Atoms. Autobiographical Reminiscences Pub. Jeebles, London, 1938. And in Sir Arthur Grimbless, A Pattern of Islands. Pub. John Murray, London, 1952. Arthur Grimble became the resident commissioner of the colony in 1926. In 1930 Grimble issued revised laws, regulations for the good order and cleanliness of the Gilbert and Ellis Islands, which replaced laws created during the BWPT. Barnab remained the headquarters of the colony until the British evacuation in 1942. After World War II, the colony headquarters was re-established on Tarawa, first on Betio Islet, then occupied by American forces following the battle for Tarawa, and subsequently on Bariki Islet. Part 5, World War II. Japan seized part of the islands during World War II to form part of their island defenses. On the 20th of November 1943, Allied forces threw themselves against Japanese positions at Tarawa at Al and Makin at Al in the Gilberts, resulting in some of the bloodiest fighting of the Pacific Campaign. The Battle of Tarawa and the Battle of Makin were a major turning point in the war for the Allies, which battles were the implementation of Operation Galvanic. Part 6 Self-Determination Part 6, Self-Determination Chapter 1, Transition to Self-Determination The formation of the United Nations Organization after World War II resulted in the United Nations Special Committee on Decolonization committing to a process of decolonization, as a consequence the British colonies in the Pacific started on a path to self-determination. As a consequence of the Ellis Islands self-determination referendum, 1974, separation occurred in two stages. 
the Tavalu Order 1975 made by the Privy Council, which took effect on the 1st of October 1975, recognized Tuvalu as a separate British dependency with its own government. The second stage occurred on 1 January 1976 when separate administrations were created out of the civil service of the Gilbert and Ellis Islands Colony. Part 6. Self-Determination. Chapter 2. Independence for Kiribati. The Gilberts obtained internal self-government in 1977 and held general elections in February 1978 which saw Ia Erenmiatabar elected chief minister at only age 27. Kiribati attained independence on 12 July 1979 by the Kiribati Independence Order 1979 made by the Privy Council. Although the indigenous Gilbert's language name for the Gilbert Islands proper is Tungaroo, the new state chose the name Kiribati, the Gilbert's rendition of Gilbert's, as an equivalent of the former colony to acknowledge the inclusion of islands which were never considered part of the Gilbert's chain. The United States gave up its claims to 14 islands of the Line and Phoenix chains. Previously asserted under the Guano Islands Act, in the 1979 Treaty of Tarawa. Part 7, Post-Independent. Post-independence politics were initially dominated by the Commonwealth of Nations youngest head of state, Ia Erenmia Tabar, just 29, Kiribati's first Baratatanti president, who served for three terms from 1979 to 1991, Tabroro Tito was elected in 1994, and re-elected in 1998 and 2002. However, in the previous parliamentary elections in 2002, Tito's opponents won major victories, and in March 2003 he was ousted in a no-confidence vote. Having served the maximum three terms, he is barred by the constitution to run for another term. His temporary replacement was Shin Tang, the Council of State Chairman. Following the constitution, another presidential election was held, in which two brothers, Anote and Harry Tong, were the two main candidates. The third one, Bandwera Barina won just 9.1%. Anote Tong, London School of Economics graduate, won on the 4th of July 2003, and was sworn in as president soon afterward. He was re-elected in 2007 and in 2012 for a third term. Part 8. The Barnaba Issue An emotional issue has been the protracted bid by the residents of Barnaba to secede and have their island placed under the protection of Fiji. Because Barnaba was devastated by phosphate mining, the vast majority of Banabans moved to the island of Rabi in the Fiji Islands in the 1940s where they now number some 5,000 and enjoy full Fijian citizenship. The Kiribati government has responded by including several special provisions in the constitution, such as the designation of a Banaban seat in the legislature and the return of land previously acquired by the government for phosphate mining. Only around 300 people remain on Barnaba. Despite being part of Kiribati, Barnabas Municipal Administration is by the Rabi Council of Leaders and Elders, which is based on Rabi. In 2006, Tai Tai Rake Kori, the Rabi Island Council's representative to the Parliament of Kiribati, called for Barnaba to secede from Kiribati and join Fiji. This recording is a derivative work from Wikipedia. For more information, Please visit www.frogcast.org.